Welcome back to the Mining Pod. Joined by Matt Kimmel of CoinShares once again for news roundup this week. We've got a lot to dive into, but first, Matt, how's your week? It's a great week. Same old, same old. Let's get to it. You're always short and to the point. I'm sure the audience loves that because <laughs> they care more about the news than they do about our weeks, which is sad, but it is the reality of things. Okay, no we have cares. a few things. No one, no one truly cares except for our mothers. The only things that we're going to talk about this week, Gemini, Genesis, SEC, that happened midweek. We'll dive into that first. Then we'll follow up with new news from the BlockFi BitFarms loan that is currently being sorted out. And we'll finish up with a few news headlines just to round out the show, including Alchemia raising $7 million Celsius, dumping bunch of ASICs on the market, and Agora uh, ditching its SPAC. So we'll start off with Genesis, Gemini, and the SEC. This is a pretty complex case because there's so many different counterparties involved with it. The high-level story is back in November, Genesis trading and lending halted withdrawals from its platform. Gemini Earn, which is a very popular uh, program for earning yields on top of your crypto that was sent out to a lot of or is marketed to a lot of retail participants halted withdrawals and, and so now all these gemini earned customers are waiting to get their 900 million dollars back from genesis genesis has been looking to restructure and then yesterday we found out that the sec is charging both parties as operating as unregistered securities within the united states that was pretty jaw-dropping going to hand it over to you the implication here is abdcg which owns genesis outright is going to have you more problems than we thought of it's just going to be continued contagion within crypto. Yeah, no, I, that was a great synopsis. I think the the big headline here that like people can take away is that Genesis is likely going to go bankrupt. And that has sort of ramifications that um, spiral kind of throughout the industry. I think their their active loan book as of Q3 um, was like $2.8 billion. They do uh, a decent amount of volume in both the the spot and and derivative markets as well. So they're they're you know a prevalent character, um, and where like this could really have knock on effects that um, are extremely challenging is if DCG is actually in trouble. Right? We talked about last week how Silvergate has um, their hands in a lot of different containers of the industry. DCG probably has even more. Um, in fact, I think they're actually invested in Silvergate themselves. Um, but just to to add to kind of the story that you put forth, because this goes you know many levels deep. Um, basically, the the founders of Gemini right are the Winklevoss twins of Facebook fame, and they kind of got in a Twitter scuffle with um, Barry Silver and like accused him of committing fraud and uh, basically intermingling the the operations of all the DCG subsidiaries, most prevalent of which is Genesis, and then um, Grayscale, right, of the GVTC fame, right, the the investment trust that you can get access through your brokerage. Um, and then kind of after alleging fraud, Sober went out sort of publicly saying, no, we're fine, everything's good. Um, then a report came out by the Financial Times that Genesis actually had $3 billion owed to creditors, right? And then uh, the SEC kind of opened investigation on them on January 6th. And then as of today, uh, they charged both Gemini and Genesis of committing unregistered securities offerings. Um, so it's it's a convoluted mess. But I think uh, for the listeners, like the takeaway generally, I think, is that Genesis is, is probably going uh, to go under. And you should kind of monitor the situation closely if there are any knock-on effects for the broader DCG ecosystem, if they have to sell their venture um, portfolio, et cetera, et cetera. I'll send it back to you. Even better synopsis than I did. So bravo to you. Uh, I think the interesting thing here for the mining sector is the contagion. So Genesis operates with Foundry. Foundry and Genesis are sister companies. They're both owned by DCG. So interesting to see what's going to be the contagion for Foundry, which of course is the largest mining pool uh, globally for Bitcoin miners and also operates an ASIC uh, trading desk also operates some sites, picked up some stuff from Compute North during Chapter 11. Uh, so there's things there to monitor. And then also just Bitcoin's price, right? So this morning, Bitcoin, I think, broke over 19K. I think we're at like 19.5. It's the first time since FTX collapsed. We're, and we were, we were above that before FTX. And now we peaked above it again. And maybe that goes back down if Genesis collapses in the next few weeks. If Genesis can stay steady and things actually normalize, maybe we get to around 20K and sit there. And that means a lot for uh, Bitcoin profitability and the ability for other miners to turn online. So 
may seem it might seem like Gemini, Genesis, all these things don't matter too much, but in fact, they do all uh, interloop together in some way, shape, or form. Let's move over to BlockFi. Last word on this. One last thing I'm going to say is this is all tied together with uh, the th three arrows capital and FTX collapse. It's kind of like the story, I think, of uh, 2022 just having like a, a little extension, right? The carnage may not necessarily be over, and I think we should be prepared for that. Um, Definitely. That's the next story. I love the recap there. Okay, let's move over to BlockFi and BitFarms. So There's actually a new article published this morning, Friday, right before recording. According to Coindesk, Bitcoin miner BitFarms looks to amend BlockFi loan and is warning of default. They have outstanding 20 million loan to the trustees of, of BlockFi. BlockFi, of course, is going through Chapter 11 bankruptcy right now. And there's about only $5 million backing up this loan as collateral. So BitFarms is taking a look at this and saying, like, is this worth it for us to pay it off? Uh, it looks like they're trying to restructure the loan. The loan was originally taken out for about $30 million at an 18% interest rate. BitFarms has been paying off a lot of its loans recently. They've been plugging in more hash rate. In fact, according to our numbers from Anthony Power, who did our like recap for 2022's uh, public miners, BitFarms was one of the top operators in the space. It did, however, make some interesting financial choices, including basically buying a very high spot Bitcoin back in January of 2022. So they've made a few missteps on the financial side of things. And this seems to be uh, continued progress on amending that with looking at how to amend this loan with BlockFi. Of course, BlockFi has its own problems. They were a large lender to the mining space. I think one of the probably second or third largest lender to the mining space. They were using the the high interest rate loans in order to feed their programs. And uh, they were often using these loans were, were backed by ASICs and they were not done in a very good fashion from, from my understanding. So there's some concerns here that there could be like more liquidations of ASICs. Maybe the trustees of BlockFi have to take on all these ASICs. And then, you know, another default in the mining ecosystem is not great for uh, just the mining industry in the next few years, trying to get more capital from investors. Yeah, from from my perspective, um, I don't know if this will necessarily be like a, a hot take or not, but I feel like this is just a strategic play for um, BitFarms, basically saying that they don't necessarily care about the reputational risk with um, BlockFi as there are as BlockFi is going through their own sort of bankruptcy proceedings. They may not see them as a prominent lender in the future of the space, um, and they sort of through saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna default because." Um, five million is less than twenty million. We have twenty million outstanding to pay, five million in collateral. We don't necessarily think that we're going to take another loan on from you in the future. So why not? It benefits us the most. The incentive is there to stop paying it unless you're willing to restructure. Um, what was the the uh, interest rate on the loan? Will do you remember? It was like higher than fifteen percent or something like that. Yeah, according to our numbers from the summer when we did some breakdowns. This loan came out at 18.1% interest rate, so fairly high. Uh, the other interest rates they had, they had some from block fills, ranging from 22% down to 18%. Then they had some foundry loans for about 16%, and NIDIG loan for 12%, and a Galaxy Digital loan for 11%. So they're kind of all over the place. This was one of the higher interest rate loans. Yeah, so maybe they see, you know, the financial decision that they made in the past that wasn't necessarily the best choice of going into an 18% interest rate loan and and thinking that, um, you know, strategically they should kind of just get rid of that and it's in their own best interest. I don't know. It'll be interesting to follow. Um, this is a, kind of a, another domino in the uh, saga of kind of restructurings and this like lender minor um dance that's going on between a lot of different uh, lenders. And I think uh, there was a report by Bloomberg that came out today that NIDIG is is kind of plugging in machines um, as well as we know that they had a significant basically undertaking of, of ASICs through different restructurings with Stronghold and uh, I believe Green Inch, et cetera. So you know, this will definitely be an interesting story to follow throughout 2023. Yeah, I saw that NIDIG report uh, from Bloomberg. I need to read that one still. I think this, to me, is just another footnote in the history of asic back loans. Uh, we had a great podcast with Glenn Jones of Icebreaker Finance back in November, I want to say at this point, about asic back loans and if they're going to survive as a capital type uh, into the next round of bull market. 
because ASIC backed loans have not been used very well by some operators in the space, specifically BlockFi. Uh, they've signed up with a lot of different users and as ASIC backed loans, like if it's not created correctly, then you just end up with a bunch of you know, very heavy desk equipment. You can't really plug it in anywhere. I think Nidig learned that the hard way. Uh, luckily, they're trying to plug those in as they can. So I think this is uh, another story like that for me. Let's move to our last few stories for the day. Got a few ones quick and heavy at you. Alchemia Protocol raised about $7 million in order to grow its DeFi vertical for mining. And then we'll move over to Agora in its failed SPAC, which it uh, killed this morning. Or, of course, news came out about it this morning on Friday. And then what was the last story we got, Matt? Celsius. Celsius. Celsius dump in ASICs. Okay, we'll get to that one. Let's go to that one first. So Celsius mining this morning signed a deal with Tuesday Capital, which is like a private firm in the space, a private miner in the space, uh, to sell ASICs for $5.6 per terahash. These are M30S units. I, I don't think we need to cover this one too much in depth. To me, this is just the Celsius trustees. They don't want these ASICs anymore. Of course, Scientific just turned off about 30,000 of their machines. They're trying to offload them. They sold about 2,000 of these units. I think the total is like for 1.3 million or something in that ballpark. To me, this just puts downward pressure on the price basics. That's the story. Your take? Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I mean, you covered it. More downward pressure on the price of ASICs. I, they're just trying to, I think, get as many dollars as they possibly can to help fill the gap um, in what they actually owe to people, right, in their bankruptcy process. Would be kind of like fun to see what they actually bought those M30, those M30 series at, um, just to see how steep of a drop off, like how much of a realized loss they're going to take. Um, but yeah, I mean, five dollars per terahash, like, oof, that's it's cheap, and they're new in the boxes. Okay, let's go next to the Gore news. I'm actually going to hand this one over to you. According to the Seeking Alpha article that we have for this one. Uh, Agora tried to go in SPAC in November 2021, like a lot of other miners tried to do during that year. And the IPO was initially filed for over $100 million and then amended to $127 million. So they're just they're not going through with it. Yeah, just like uh, I believe Grid did the same thing, and I think Griffin Mining as well. Um, sometimes the SPACs don't go through, especially when the struggle that publicly listed miners have had, it may not look as appetizing as it once did in November 2021. Um, I, I don't know. I What do you think about the 2023? Do you think any of the public miners like go private? Some of them kind of getting into that zone around a dollar where they may get delisted. I think this will be an interesting story to sort of follow. But um, yeah, I, I think it, it makes sense for, for them not to go through with this back. I think it depends for public miners to go private again. It depends on where the, where the valuations are at what the runway looks like and then also how much they've diluted themselves against the public market. So if they have enough shares within the company or within the management to be able to pull off going private again, some of these companies have diluted so much and sold so many shares. I think it'd be pretty difficult to be able to get like enough capital in your hands to go private once again. So perhaps that happens, but like if you have to buy back shares from investors, that's pretty tough. Uh, yeah. Like what mining company is going to have money to do that? And, just because you're delisted, like you can go to different exchanges or you can figure out what to do with that. But it's, it's a tough place to be. And I think that's something that we're going to see in 2023. And I know you're writing a report on this right now about how there's going to be like consolidation. This is one of those areas of consolidation to watch. And the failure in SPACs, last thought on this, the failure in SPACs, that's pretty predictable. If you didn't time your SPAC well, then you weren't getting off the ground. And sometimes that's a good thing, right? Like getting through the IPO process or a SPAC process is really expensive. But sometimes it's better. Uh, Celsius, or not Celsius, but Core Scientific, I think, is one to, to look at with this. You know, they they went public, they rushed through it, and then w- immediately when they listed, their share price was only, only going down. Uh, and now they're going through Chapter 11. So sometimes you want to stay private because you want to keep all your bad information about your company internal so you're able to fix it. I think that's an underrated part of this whole whole deal. Let's talk about Alchemia, though, as the last bit of this. Alchemia Protocol... It's basically uh, putting mining and DeFi into one online protocol. We've had Alchemia founder Leo Zhang on the podcast twice over the last few years. Really cool project. Uh, They're currently working on Avalanche protocol. Then they're going to be, they are working on an Ethereum protocol version of this as well. 
and then going to be launching a Bitcoin mining version of this. That's the grand ambition of this is to be able to port your Bitcoin mined into a DeFi protocol and then be able to sell your future hash rate for basically a hedge product or as a derivative. And then someone who's in the DeFi landscape can go and buy this hash rate on a DeFi platform uh, if they just want those cash flows. And then the miner can secure money upfront before producing that hash rate. And this is supposed to balance uh, the miners and the capital markets out there, make things more efficient. So this is a pretty interesting project to watch. I'm a big, big fan of it. Great news for the Alchemia team. Yeah, that was a great synopsis. I think this is really positive news. Uh, we talked like like a month or two ago about Luxor's uh, derivative product where you could sort of also hedge your um, cash flows as as a miner. There, you know, there being market competition and another entry and another option for miners, that's a huge win. Um, and I, one of the issues with that Luxor product is you have pretty significant counterparty risk with Luxor themselves and kind of the, you know, the early stages of the product. I'm sure um, the market structure were sort of like uh, expand and, and there'll be new kinds of offerings um, in the in the Bitcoin mining derivative space. But, you know, this is sort of um, another choice and, and it's sort of based more on DeFi protocols, uh, which I think will be interesting. And, you know, there's there's different trade-offs between what they can do, but generally having miners getting the option to sort of get more financially sophisticated, I think everyone should be cheering this on. Yeah, like I love this project because it brings in in two different things that are amazing: mining and being able to generate cash flows by plugging into the internet with a piece of hardware, and then DeFi, which is just like self-sovereign use of money for whatever purpose you have. And DeFi still needs a lot of work. DeFi still has a lot of problems, but I think if you bring in the mining applications with these like cash flows based on hard work, then you actually solve a fundamental problem with DeFi, which is in DeFi that they create these tokens that have no value in of, of themselves. And then they just kind of spin themselves into perpetual Ponzi schemes and people lose out. But if you bring in this actual work through mining, you might actually be able to get these DeFi protocols to work correctly and efficiently. So cheerleading the uh, Alchemia team on, also go check out their website. They have some great articles to learn about mining. We'll close it there for the week. Thanks, Matt, for joining us and everyone listening. Thanks for checking us out. Give us a rating on your podcast or YouTube platform of choice. It really helps out the show or share it with a friend. Thanks, guys. Cheers.